Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion, the late afternoon edition. We have some news here. The development of Tropical Depression Number 9. Boy, this area up top really getting busy. Hurricane Gaston, now a major hurricane with 115 mile per hour winds. TD Number 8 formed here earlier today. And now 99L can be put back on the recycle list. Remember, they named these areas of interest or invest areas 90 through 99. So it's no longer 99L, it is tropical depression number 9. Top winds 35 miles per hour, moving to the west at 9 miles per hour, and the air pressure around 1,009 millibars. This is the official 5-day forecast track for TD number 9. Forecast to become a tropical storm here sometime tomorrow. And if this system up here, TD 8, doesn't become a storm first, then this will be the H storm, and it's pronounced Hermine. So we'll see how that works out. That's academic right now. Just wanted to talk about it. The forecast of the center of the storm, the ill-defined center, if you will, it's not an eye of the hurricane or anything like that yet, but this represents the center. And, of course, the effects can extend well away from that center location. And anybody up here in the Big Bend area down towards the Nature Coast, Cedar Key, and even perhaps into Tampa Bay needs to be very, very vigilant at keeping up with what this system does because this is a big storm surge prone region of the Gulf Coast and this has the potential to put several feet of water across the coastline above ground level depending on how strong it gets, the angle of approach and other aspects such as that which I will get into later as we get that information in from the National Hurricane Center. Um, the discussion on this, I want to read it to you because it's interesting. Clicked on the wrong one. TD number nine discussion. Basically, if we go through, they talk about in the first paragraph that the data indicates that we now have a, uh, enough organization for it to be called a tropical depression. The second uh, paragraph talking about the strengthening, that it's moving through a marginal, marginal environment for intensification with vertical shear of 15 to 20 knots, so only slow development for now. Later on in the period, it looks like that the shear could relax a little bit and allow this to become more organized and maybe become a tropical storm. But then right in here, there are mixed signals in the model guidance with the Euro showing the cyclone dissipating in the Gulf while the GFS delays the, the development four to five days. And it's just crazy. Much of the tropical cyclone guidance, the HWARF, and models that are specific to tropical cyclone intensity guidance are more aggressive, as you see right there. So given the uncertainty, the forecast is quite conservative and shows the system peaking at 45 knots below all of the explicit intensity guidance. So that's interesting. We're going to need to watch that very carefully. You have to remember the intensity forecast skill of the National Hurricane Center is the lowest of their skill set. The forecast track is much better overall than the intensity. The least amount of skill is where intensity forecasting is concerned. So keep that in mind. We'll have to just wait and see and hope this doesn't blow up like the H wharf has shown over and over and over. And then of course they discuss in the last paragraph here about the initial motion off to the west and that will eventually move off to the north and northeast and move along into the Big Bend area of Florida, but then there is some reasonable, they're talking about agreement in the track in the global models, although there's a fair amount of along the track spread. In other words, if it's moving along, some of the models have it here on a certain day, while other models have it here on a certain day, not so much where it might cross the coast here and here, if that makes sense. It's and basically how fast it's going. There's some disagreement there. But overall, I can see here peaking at about 50 miles per hour towards that Big Bend area of Florida. Here's the latest satellite animation. Still fairly disorganized. This upper level low still putting some wind shear over the system, and that is pushing the convection to the south. But once it gets out in here to the open gulf, it may have a chance to intensify and become a tropical storm. Uh, this is a close-up of that process, and you can clearly see, uh, well, maybe it's not as clear as it was. It certainly was earlier today, but the Stronger northerly winds coming in here, pushing that convection to the south. But I tell you what, it definitely has more of this curved look to it. This sort of curled up, almost looks like a shrimp. And um, when they start looking like that, a beautiful gulf shrimp, 
then problems usually arise soon thereafter. Maybe not this time, maybe so, we'll just have to wait and see, but it is definitely getting that sort of curly cue, shrimp shape, whatever you want to call it, and uh, heading into the Gulf of Mexico where water temperatures are very warm. Meanwhile, this is what strong east-southeast shear, or really this is southeasterly shear, looks like right over the top of TD number 8 and pushing those uh, deep thunderstorms away from it and then they collapse as the process is disrupted like blowing out a candle. There's the exposed center. This may or may not come back. Possible that we'll see tropical storm watches for portions of the Outer Banks, but this should be a fairly low impact event for North Carolina. We need to watch the evolution of what happens with TD9 because earlier today some of the modeling, the GFS in particular, indicating that it might try to come up after crossing Florida and directly impact North Carolina sometime next week. So there you have it. Then, of course, we have a lot of other things going on, including Madeline and Lester in the Pacific, and then what will eventually be 92L coming off the coast of Africa in a couple of days, but we can worry about that in a couple of days. All right, well, this is your evening update. Again, I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk again tomorrow morning.